Welcome to Cape Cast, Brandon. How's that corp? <laughs> good man. <laughs> nice. Good. Really good. Really good eating he's on camera. Car- he's carb loading before the episode. Mm. <clears throat> good to see Chris, you guys again. Yeah, it's been so it's been great. Yeah, we didn't just do three hours. Feeling energized, <laughs> feeling on top of it, sharp. Good. Oh, come yeah. get some gorp. Yeah. <laughs> on my way. All right. Hmm. This is the second part of our uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League uh, review series. We are breaking down the uh, movie part by part. Um, so it's going to be a total of seven parts. We're doing the epilogue as a separate um, episode. And our, our first one we put up think wednesday of this past week so our intention is to keep releasing them weekly um so yeah today and and also i will say um if if you love talking about this Zack snyder his movies anything geek um yes even marvel (laughs) uh definitely hit the subscribe button here on youtube um hit the notification bell to stay up to date on uh, everything that we've got going on, uh, and then definitely check us out at Cape Cash Show on Twitter. Um, so let us begin. Um, part two of Zack Snyder's Justice League. You want to throw that graphic up, Brandon? Sorry, I got <laughs> gorp. I was trying to eat it discreetly. <laughs> I wonder if this will be on uh, Instagram. A few minutes. Crunch. Crunch. <laughs> Okay. Oh, uh, come on. Um, you're, you're burying our show yes. right now. <laughs> Two, the Age of Heroes. Oh, you can get back man. to your corp. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Brandon. Shove it, shovel it in. Keep shoveling it in. I'll um, mute my mic. Yeah. You talk. Part, <laughs> part two, the Age of Heroes. You can take the graphic down now, Brandon. <laughs> He's busy. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so this this part opens up in I'm the... I'm doing an Ezra Miller impression <laughs> when he's in the back cave. Ah, yeah. You got it? Um, okay. Yeah, I got it. The wave. Get the wave. Um, so this, this uh, part opens up in the Russian city for the first time where Steppenwolf is building his stronghold. And you know what? We should probably say... Spoilers, right, Brandon? We should. We'd probably say spoilers. Should we use the spoilers graphic for the second time ever? Um, Has Chris yeah, seen I mean, the spoilers graphic? I don't think I've seen this. No. All right, let's let's play the spoilers graphic. Spoilers. <laughs> That's it. That's the spoilers graphic. Spoilers audio. I prefer over the graphic itself. Yeah, that mm. was uh that was that was all Brandon that you heard right there. Yeah, all Brandon. I I do a little voice acting on the side here at Cape Cast. <laughs> we know, <laughs> we all know. Oh man, getting some tips. We had Ray Porter on, got some tips on exactly how to do it. So yeah, I'm working. Didn't you just point out there. that you've been thrashing your throat for years and you're ruining it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it I, might be I, God I given that. for Ray Porter. Maybe, just maybe. Because <clears throat> Brandon, as you know, you shouldn't do this. You're like, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I told him that. Anyway, continue, Ryan. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this this part opens up in the Russian uh, Russian city, um, kind of like a Chernobyl. nuclear wasteland. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Chernobyl type um, situation. Yeah, I don't think they directly say it's Chernobyl, but it's kind of, I guess, implied. Somewhere. Yeah, um, and it, one of the first things that stands out to you in this this scene is. The fact that they actually address why Steppenwolf why it's is there. <laughs> yeah. Well, also why he's using it. Um, his line yeah. when he arrives out of the boom tube is, it's toxic. That's good. Um, and then he he uh, works his way into the reactor, nuclear reactor that Brandon just had a graphic up for and um, sets up the... Uh, okay. monolith. There you go. That's the graphic. <laughs> you'll <laughs> you'll smooth it out tonight. I've no I I have no doubt, Brandon. It's coming. We'll, you'll get the hang of it. <laughs> um, yeah. So he sets up like this monolith deal that he he uses to um 
unify the mother boxes, but also it's kind of like a communication. FaceTime. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, apocalyptic <Essentially>. FaceTime. <laughs> Um, What's well, cool to see we, like their tech version of it versus like the Kryptonian tech that you got to see in Man of Steel um, yeah. with um, I always forget her name. <laughs> Alan pointed it out last episode. What was the uh, what's the Keelix. what's the Keelix? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. All over it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So he 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 sets that up in there um, and. Uh, drops the first mother box in and the di the the line that sticks with me is he will be pleased he will see my worth again it's just kind of like the first time that we see something more to this character other than you know him just trying to cause havoc and be the bad guy <laughs> yeah like some purpose behind what he's who trying is to do. he we'll find out no <laughs> um yeah. But was there other than what was kind of mentioned there? Was there anything that stood out to you guys about this this sequence, um, visually or story that um, kind of resonated with you? Chris, go ahead. Um, I mean, it, like you said before, it's cool that we just got purpose and reason for why he's there. And mm -hmm. I know that it's not like this is the DC universe, so it's not real crossover cities, but this is Chernobyl, and it was kind of cool that we saw like the uh the cosmonaut stuff from like, you know, the Russian space race as they kind of introed in mm -hmm. uh, just little details that we got to see were cool. Yeah. That was, that was, that was a good call there. Um, that was, was that like stained glass or something? I couldn't or tell if it was like, like stained glass or if it was like a ripped kind of a banner, just the way it was yeah. positioned against like a broken window. I couldn't tell what it was supposed to be. Right. Um, Brandon, yeah. what you got? No, I mean, I, I, I just, I can't say much more than, the two of you, I mean, I, I really just appreciate that they gave a reason for it being here um, versus it just, you know, in theatrical, it's just we're here. And it's probably just only because of the studio wanting you no know, civilian type stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like we're going to set it just like they had the Gotham stuff uh, or the um, what is it called in BBS? The uh, the where they have the actual fight. Um, uh, the, Strikers that's Island. uninhabited. Yeah, Strikers Island. Um, <clears throat> it's like a studio man. We can't have, this, you know what? <laughs> it's uninhabited. <laughs> yeah, I think they, they use that uh, in BBS. I think they use that word. They actually use that word like three or four times. <laughs> yeah, in that sequence. Um, <clears throat> um, but no, I mean, I, I, um, I like seeing just being able to have like the time to establish that and show yeah. the exterior, you know, all the exterior stuff of this location is so much better. There's, you get a better sense of this area in this movie, mm -hmm. in this version um, versus it just feeling like a nothing, like just like video it's game. Also, just the you colors. <laughs> it's just right. very different. Um, yeah. yeah. And no Russian um, family. Yes. <laughs> Dostoevsky. <Yeah, exactly. laughs> <laughs> um, so af after that, we it jumps to uh, Bruce and Alfred on the jet. Yeah. There you go. He's on, now he's got it. He's, he's humming. <laughs> um, and I kind of wanted to get your thoughts on this, Brandon, because I know that you have a fondness for the Batfleck um, Alfred dialogue um yeah and this is this is the sequence where bruce kind of seems like he just kind of gets it off his chest <clears throat> where he says i made a promise to him being superman on his grave i think you kind of get the um method behind the madness of him trying to hunt down yeah this is it kind of it's kind of furthers um i guess bruce's kind of uh his whole journey as, as far as what he's trying to do by bringing all these people in not only is he trying to do it to save you know the world essentially but he's also trying to save a part of himself in terms of making up for his mistakes <clears throat> and his you know whole outlook um not only on the world but on superman and kind of how he's changed since uh seeing 
seeing the light, so to speak. But I, yes, I do have a fondness for Alfred and uh, Bruce's exchanges with that Terrio dialogue. But I do. I also have a very great fondness for Gillette razors and close-ups on them. <laughs> um, yeah, which you and, get. Uh, and, you definitely and get. I get that at the very, very yeah. beginning of this scene. So yeah, it's yeah. glad to see that. Um. So yeah. What so, you guys, what about, do you have any takeaways from this scene? Man, these kind of scenes for me, it's you get like them like talking about Barry Allen's like meta human thing. Do what? Sorry, we're both saying. Uh, I was just saying you get like the you know refreshing on okay, we've what he's like. What's the update on basically Barry, uh, yeah. the kid from the uh, convenience yeah. store? Um, mm -hmm. They go, they kind of like touch base, you know. And you you also get like Bruce arriving on the helicopter. We didn't talk about that, but arriving on the helicopter, him like jumping off before it lands again like he did in bbs mm -hmm. uh he's like you know he's got his got his little nice little jacket on that you know, he's tucks it in like he does every time he gets off i just love it love love affleck and suits you know, does something <laughs> for me uh it's getting weird bro. and uh it's getting weird the that, I, guess. I love the uh, way he tucks uh, that jacket in oh mm. yeah <laughs> he's just so he's just he's so suave you know um, he's, he's a pretty man. You can say got a, got a little bit of joke, <laughs> you know, a little bit of humor, uh, injected with, uh, you know, the King Tad jokes that Alfred makes, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, then catch the next King Tide in Jamaica, mm -hmm. Costa Rica's nice. Um, I think you're so, on a little Michael Caine with that. Uh, yeah, uh, a little bit. It did, it did kind of do that way. <laughs> it's not, it's not just your you. house. It's not just your house. Son. It's your father's house. It's all that's left of him. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the. Uh, I, I. Yeah. I love. I love their exchanges, and they're great throughout this movie. Just like but they did were. Did you love videos. it? <laughs> yeah, I loved it. Yep. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. You see what um, I did there? I asked you guys what you thought, and then I just jumped over on top of it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, we saw. We saw it. With anything, anytime with Batman, it just it's just natural. You just got to go. It's okay. Yeah, we all have our characters. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, and it, these kind of scenes in this movie, these little uh, I don't know, like aside dialogue scenes, like the Chris Terrio dialogue is what it just like shines for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's kind of like the thing. I can't remember exactly the quote, but I think this is the scene where Alfred says something along the lines of like, you've been working um, day and night to cr build this team for tomorrow or something like something along those lines. I can't remember. I'm butchering it. I'm sure. But it's just it, that kind of thing. A well-written and memorable um, but that's kind of the standout thing for me with yeah, they really um, stress the haste scene and others. Yeah, for sure. Um, so then we jump to the there's not much there. We jump to the Kryptonian ship, um, where Silas is leaving from work late again. So building that context for Cyborg where early for uh for him, eleven thirty. Yeah, yeah. So it kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. tells out to like he's always burning the midnight oil calls back exactly. to the relationship uh, crazy you know yeah. crazy concept <laughs> <clears throat> um and the the janitor that he has kind of an exchange with is runs into the parademons that are searching for the mother box there and the Raimi um, scene yep it is very it is very just like that Raimi under character. lighting that it kind of just yeah. the way the camera comes in on it yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like that horror zoom, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Um. So yeah, that, that, nothing, nothing huge there to talk about. Just, just a context building, um, scene. But right after that, we jump to the Arrow of Artemis and Themyscira sequence, which, um, God dang, <laughs> can we please, can we please, WB, anybody who's listening, <laughs> can we please get more Amazon? stuff like we do in Zack Snyder's Justice League. It's just complete next level. Well, the thing is, I don't like the Amazons unless he does it because he just gives so much <laughs> like personality yeah. and lore and I mean just a simple little scene just, like this, it just yeah. it already they builds back like a millennia it. of oh they have like these customs and rituals and like this is an mm -hmm. old like 
there's just so much there that they don't even show, but they imply and it builds yeah. that world for you so simply. And I don't know, nobody else has done that yep. in the other movies as far as I'm concerned. And it doesn't hurt that it's so freaking beautifully shot. Like her yeah. cloak that she has on with the fire reflecting off the feathers mm -hmm. in there. Like, and then the, of course the, I've got it written down here, the quote, when she grabs the arrow of Artemis, she says, sky torch, hero beacon, scatter the darkness burn as he burned in days before show her the darkness before the daylight of history warn my daughter that war has come and protect her and then before she fires it she says return to me diana um which we found out later um zach has kind of mentioned that in future uh installments diana was going to become the new queen of the amazons it really reminds um, me of the Game of Thrones, like wedding vow thing. Uh, the Starks do. Was it like, yeah, father, Smith, warrior, mm. mother, mm -hmm. crow, whatever, like crone. Yeah. Um, just uh, very like the cadence of it is very similar. Yeah. Um, I, I love like Sky Torch Hero Beacon. Like this is, like, <laughs> it's just so epic. <laughs> And then he, they, she fires it, and it's just like ripping through the sky. <laughs> of Do, course, does she other. say that it's the arrow of Artemis, or is that a, yeah. like just something that's been? She says it. I mean, I'm, yeah, okay. <clears throat> um, I think they open the box, and there's, I think there's two in there. Yeah, there were two of them in there. Say, so. um, don't know if that you know is something that would come into play, or there would just be two of them. But um, back up in case you misfires. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of the Amazon. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Well, they made such a big, heavy box. Like, this one won't light. One. <laughs> well, that's like well, that's also in Game of Thrones when they're doing that funeral thing, mm -hmm. uh, the Tullys or whatever, and he lights the thing. Uh, the the younger like Tully, that's like you know he's like the dunce that nobody likes. He keeps shooting the arrow and he keeps missing the the like whoever's. Mm -hmm. Whoever's on the pyre or whatever's supposed yeah. to be in the water. And then the other one just like comes up, just like shoots it, walks off. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah, the cool guy walking um, away from the I, explosion. One thing I, I also want to mention, which I feel like I mention in every time, every video we talk about this, but Connie Nielsen, Hippolyta in this movie, her performance is just, it's just stellar. Um, yeah, she's great. Uh, and, and so much especially so much time in it too. Especially coming off of yeah, Wonder Woman 84 where she was just so underused. Um like depressingly underused. <laughs> um so yeah. this, it was just good to see. Seconds. Yeah. Um that's what kind of Dave was saying Friday on the Vodka stream. It's like he interviewed her for Wonder Woman 84 yeah. and she's barely in it. And he's like, Man, I really want to interview her now because I actually have stuff to talk to her about now, you know, with the movie, because that movie yeah. she was barely in it. So Yeah. Um, um He'll get her. He'll get her. Yeah. The so after that we jump to the uh Louvre scene with Wonder Woman. And I just wanted to I put this in there. There's not there's not you know, I mean, there is some character context that kind of gets developed here, but it, the thing that stands out to me is I was, just, I see this scene and I'm just like, God, this fits in so well with the first Wonder Woman movie. Just like, yeah, how you know, they, the Wayne Enterprises trucks pull up there in the photo and all that. And it, it just makes me, it, it's so like anger inducing because like DC for so long wanted to be like Marvel and, like they had it like it <laughs> it was perfect and they just decided to do what they did to um justice league and movies thereafter um yeah go ahead brandon <laughs> what <laughs> you inhaled like you had something to say maybe you don't <laughs> Nah, just like you know like she's still working at the same place that she the Louvre that she was working at uh, in Wonder Woman, but in 84, she's like working at the Smithsonian um, just so that, I, I don't know. It, it, we don't have to go to that. Let's not talk about 84. Where they, where they gas up know. all their I, airplanes in case anybody wants to drop them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And key cards open up everything. Um, 
yeah i the, i mean the scene the other than the, there is kind of some cool dialogue where the uh, um whoever's working in there with him with her is trying to get her to kind of tell her what she's been up to and she just kind of maintains this like low-key existence um this scene was in the original trailer right like the very yeah like years back nothing very interesting yeah, yeah right yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but then she gets she she hears on TV about the fire and the shrine of the Amazons, and ends the scene with the uh, invasion quote. Mm-hmm. She, <laughs> um, which we will talk about in a few minutes. Actually, um, we jump to the Ryan Choi and Silas um, sequence where, yeah, the. Um, I, what is the organization that's coming in there to? I, I I couldn't pick it up. Like coming in there to collect all the evidence and stuff after those people the people were abducted. I don't know. Is it, it says I think it says what OSI or something. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. That's why I couldn't like. I don't know. I was like, it's weird. Like you would think it'd be something recognizable. Maybe there's some organization for this type of thing. But then she he the guy he talks to acts like he has no idea what anything metahuman yeah. or alien science is so <laughs> well with it being dc i wonder if it's like they just don't have fbi so it's like they made up their own yeah yeah you no know, I mean, version <clears throat> of it could be yeah they they do well is man of steel a man of, i don't know this is probably like yeah <laughs> super granular <laughs> um so yeah, basically the this government, I guess, organization is there to get evidence about these guys who were abducted, the janitor and company. Um, and they, the, Silas, kind of explains that the mother box box, why the mother box box is empty. He says it was misplaced, not stolen, um, which he obviously has, or cyborg has in his closet. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. but the, the takeaways, this kind of is the kickoff for the, the Batman parademon confusion in Gotham. Um, the, he, he, one of the investigators like pops a sketch of the, um, the description up on the glass. And I was kind of interested what your guys' thoughts were on that part of the story because i felt like that was one of the things that was kind of weak um if i was going to pick something that was weak in this movie kind of like that batman subplot with the parademons um yeah, what are your I thoughts mean, on that <clears throat> well they like, don't really gordon good yeah i mean gordon pretty quickly dismisses it um mm. is it just a lead-in for gordon you think or like possibly um because yeah, I mean, I I don't not that I can think of that they like go any further than um because he yeah like I feel like he just throws it in the this the people's drawings in the trash or whatever and well, he throws like his, his messages way to say, in the trash he throws his yeah. messages in the trash and then yeah Christmas shows him the which we'll get into whenever we get that to that scene and I guess the other part but. Yeah, I, I imagine it's just a lead in for Gordon to be like, look, you know, think yeah. that after 20 years of fighting criminals that he starts kidnapping Which people. I love that line. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's that's what I would assume. Simple yeah. as that. I mean, um, so speaking of Motherbox, next we jump to Cyborg's apartment um, and we get the kind of like Frankenstein ish. Uh, reveal with him he says uh, basically his dad tells him that he doesn't have to stay locked up in there and he says something along the lines of you know a lot about monsters don't you especially how to make them Um, I was just curious what you guys thought about this scene and kind of how cyborg in general is treated kind of like leading up to that conversation with Diana where she kind of tries to encourage him to um, actually like leave the house (laughs) and do more with what he's got. Go ahead, Chris. 
Um, I mean, this is one that I think Brandon, you and I had spoke about before. Of I kind of like the line that they used in the theatrical release yeah. where he was, I don't remember exactly what it was. He was like, Silas is something about monsters and it's, it's like you're not a monster or something like that to, uh, to Cyborg. And yeah. I think it's funny you assume I was talking about myself when uh, uh, yeah, he wasn't. Yeah. It was just something of like he sees himself was... as a monster and a little bit more tension kind of with the the father son relationship that they had. And I like that line yeah. in the theatrical. Um, yeah, I do too. I think I mentioned that in our like initial thoughts review that we did here, mm-hmm. Ryan. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's like the only part of the theatrical that I was like, <laughs> I kind of missed that part. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it can, I think the tone of it conveys, I think it has a, a better, like it's, it's a little, it has a more like uh, I don't know the right word, but it's more of a, a like diss, so to speak to Silas mm-hmm. uh, from Victor versus this is very like straightforward. Like, mm-hmm. you know, a lot about monsters, especially how to make them like, okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But the other one is more like suggestive. Like you actually yeah. have to think about it. Um, I do love the voice effect in this scene too. Yeah, mm. yeah, agree. Um, so we get the next. We move to the Diana actually arriving at the shrine of the Amazons, um, and Brandon get that uh, that Aquaman sketch or whatever I I uh, uh, <laughs> sent yeah. you earlier. Um, but yeah, so she arrives. She arrives. Uh, to to find the arrow of Artemis, and th- this scene is just so beautifully shot to me from start to finish, from when she arrives, like the just the lighting, um, kind of like the sequence of her lighting the torch and everything, and then like mm-hmm. superhero landing in her like human clothes down in the um, like ruins, and then obviously the set piece where all of the um, kind of like the the history lesson history is transcribed on the walls and this is as you watch as you watch Zack Snyder's Justice League there's there's a lot of times if you have seen the theatrical where you're like it's like what what were they thinking like not including this in the in the original movie this was one for me just because i thought it was a beautiful set piece oh yeah all the drawings Wait, could you imagine being like the production artist that went and saw the <laughs> when they're like what yeah. <laughs> like i spent so, so long on that, that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah i uh i i was watching this today and i thought about the aquaman um <laughs> and the Justice League, the Aquaman drawings that they had, we're all holding it. Yeah, so I was like, "This is this is in a nutshell the comparison between Justice League and Justice League." <laughs> um, that is <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, I, oh, it's so. I bet I didn't like. I bet Josh drew that himself. <laughs> <laughs> looks like uh the artwork of a third grader it's so bad too because they they show that and like the people like like awkwardly move out of the way yeah. for no reason too and yeah. then and then and then they zoom into it they're, they're and, all like oh that's our cue yeah <laughs> then this also sets up like a weird canon for the character of like so has he been around forever that he's like lore and right. art yeah. or is he just like a young dude like that's going to be explained in his that's next movie. True. It totally undercuts the whole like, yeah. yeah, that's crazy. But they also, they also like zoom into the, like you watch it the f- first time from that, like far back shot and you're like, Oh, it's terrible. And then they decide to like zoom in on it and like pan all the way across really slowly. <laughs> like, Oh gosh. But yeah, so they show the, the compare and contrast that with the scene or the uh, room that Diana walks to walks into um where she's just it's this platform in the middle of a room and just up on the ceilings and on the walls transcribed around the room is this history lesson that she ends up um describing to uh bruce wayne later but i wanted to get your guys's thoughts on kind of that whole sequence just from her arriving to you know as she's looking at all the stuff down in the ruins um brandon you fire away uh i mean i really liked it it's got a very like 
it's I, I love that like the again the establishing that they're they're allowed to have time to just establish you know where she is out exterior shot she goes and gets some stuff to be able to make her torch to get down in there they have mm-hmm. that really cool shot where she falls down you know she like jumps down uh superhero landing yeah uh little tomb raider then, scene I, i'm a sucker yeah. for yeah like you know just like the little like hidden like she waves the fire and it shows the shadow uh of very uh lord of the, the rings too, to go. He's walking along that wall on the outside um yeah yeah drop off um yeah i would have um i was wondering when we found out about this scene if this is where they were gonna transition into uh the history lesson but i'm glad that they saved it for you yeah. know when she's because it gives her a reason to tell it to somebody when she tells it to right. Bruce. Mm-hmm. um instead of it just like being this like she envisions it somehow by being there and looking at these drawings and it they realize sure. it um but no, i liked it and it, it's great seeing her reaction to it like she knows that this is serious yeah. because this she's you know when bruce tells um he tells alfred or alfred says that's like uh not for two or whatever zero for two as far as the mm-hmm. metahumans that they've been able to locate and uh they're not going to join and so when she comes down here it's like it convinces her okay i have to it's t- this is serious. So, and you can see it on her face. Yeah. I mean, that's, this is the first clip. I think Zach like teased mm-hmm. with new footage for um, this movie too, for good reason. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Chris, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, same page as you guys, that arrival shot of her kind of checking out the shrine and looking for the arrow, just the way it's lit. It's beautiful. Like you just mm-hmm. feel like you're in this, you're you're there. It's just like very it's amazing how he kind of like thing. creates those worlds like yeah so well and doesn't feel like this like claustrophobic set like <laughs> yeah and it's not uh, like what people yeah. criticize is like you know just like the dark bread and butter like kind of brooding thing like it was a very light low contrast scene that looked yeah. great felt awesome mm-hmm. um you know it was cool seeing like the little walk around of creating her little torch that was almost like video yeah. game esque and then it led into the next thing which like just kind of gave me right. Tomb Raider vibes and all that. Um so yeah I mean great looking scenes. It was cool to see, you know, I just whoever came up with that set, I'm so glad that we all got to <laughs> finally experience it. I feel so bad that they had to go the past it's, few years thinking they wasted uh <laughs> this time. stuff this stuff leaked out and I think uh Pena and those guys were part of the people that got the images um mm-hmm. and were kind of pushed to leak it out uh so to speak yeah. uh, to put it to get it out there um but yeah um they like <laughs> this was one of the first like evidences of there being way more and dark side especially uh mm-hmm. dark side's involvement um right way so long ago <laughs> way 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 back way yeah. so long ago yeah this is one of those things you could take a still you know any frame and it's like oh that's a cool shot which is yeah. the whole thing they, great throughout this is another one too chris i know we briefly in our last little chat we talked about the justice is gray version mm-hmm. this sequence um is it's so cool but like when they when they're when she's actually in the room and like yeah. looking at everything is panning around and like the metallics and stuff on the um on the art and stuff it's it's really cool it's worth it's worth checking out nice. um <clears throat> so then we move to aquaman um the scene where he saves the uh kind of capsized boat sailor um and drops no him the green bar. goo yeah <laughs> nope <laughs> Oh my gosh. I, oh, <laughs> I keep forgetting about the green goo. I feel like Brandon <laughs> brings it up every once in a while. I'm like, when it like explodes at the, the parademon explodes and the rooftop in Gotham with the three mother boxes <laughs> and it's blood or whatever. <laughs> oh, so brutal. So silly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Aquaman saves a guy and he drops him off in the, in a bar. Um, and, kind of it's just kind of like his an introduction to him in a in a different sense than what we got at the um in iceland where he's kind of just 
cap or um bruce mentions his good deeds like this is the kind of thing that he just kind of does and like isn't looking for credit or anything just low-key you know <laughs> i love that they they lay into his um his like the alco alcohol being kind of a like a coping mechanism for him like mm -hmm. he still like is out there like fighting the fight like in the shadows so to speak but he's he's got a lot of stuff that he's dealing with mainly is like the family stuff yeah and his you know him running from uh the throne so to speak so yeah it's good that they don't shy away from that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love when they when he opens that door and the, the, the there's a king there's a kingdom, there's a king song starts playing, but he opens that door up and it's just like a tempest. Like, like <laughs> yeah, and, and but he's just like this huge dude and he just walks out into it. It's just such a cool like leave it to Zack Snyder to make a shot where a dude's just like walking out a door from the inside, <laughs> like <laughs> something super cool. But yeah, Brandon, you were talking about that, that song. Um, I, I thought yeah, the Nick Cave song. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I mentioned this on the last stream, uh, but just to make sure it's covered in terms of giving credit where I got it. Uh, Dyson Colbert from uh, Justice League by the minute. I think that they're the ones that mentioned this, which is um, great show, by the way. Check it out. Indeed. <laughs> indeed. Um, hopefully we'll be getting them on here to do a, a part pretty soon. Um, kind of narrow that down. But uh, but yeah, um, Nick Cave, uh, this is one of his songs and it's obviously got the direct, you know, line for line. You, you listen to the, the lyrics and it's, you know, you could you could kind of apply it to uh, Arthur, mm. but it's also got an element um, where uh, they had Nick. I assume he and his I don't know if they're still together or not, but they had a, a teenage kid that passed away, and so and his their kid was named Arthur. So it's got that connection as well. Um, so just, just kind of coincidentally, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, um, this uh, you know this scene is awesome like it's such a i remember yeah. seeing the behind the scenes footage of like the, yeah, uh, the, the practical the, nature of them yeah. filming this <laughs> and i'm sure there's digital elements in it too but like for them to just at least you know do this practically um right. it's so crazy and i love yeah. to like that's something that you notice like when i'm pulling screenshots for these parts it's like everything is center framed. It's so different than most movies where you're framing in thirds. Mm -hmm. uh, but because of the format that he chose to shoot this on, yeah. it utilizes that center framing pretty much every single shot. And it's really interesting, interesting to see because yeah. it's not common I'll to pay attention to that of, next time I watch. Yeah. Uh, um, which, you know, it's going to be soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. So he, he dives off and we get the, um, he swims to what looks to be a King Atlan kind of statue ruins. Um, and we get the, the, what would have been the first real like Volko character scene um, in DC movies. If this had come out when it was intended to, um, but what were your, what were y'all's thoughts on, on this whole sequence here? Um, start with Chris. Um, it's hard for me not to see Norman Osborn, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I did like the little part of their Back exchange. Formula. Yeah, exactly. It's cold. <laughs> cold. Uh, part of the exchange where they're arguing about like, you know, him almost hating, uh, the Atlanteans and, you know, he's like, they don't call me, you know, King of the Surface when he's trying to make the yeah. comparison of like hanging out up there. I love that delivery. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, they don't call what me. What do you want? Yeah. <clears throat> it's great. Brandon. Yeah. What you got? My first thought was uh, puzzle pieces. <laughs> um, <laughs> you frantically laying out your Photoshop grid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to put all seems, pieces seems together. So long ago. <laughs> um, <clears throat> No, I, uh, yeah, I, I love the exchange between them and it just does, mm. it, it helps, um, you know, unlike the theatrical, it just helps give context to and and like lay tracks for what they, you know, would eventually explore yeah. in his solo movie. Um, 
Mm. And that's what Zach does. So what, like he, he did so much like groundwork for the continuation of these characters outside of his own personal movies, like to where like really like laid so much good foundation for them to explore for the mm-hmm. movies that they did explore and the movies that they were intending to and never did. It's crazy how much is laid in, out in this movie. Like, yeah. Um, I love the, the there's dialogue where they talk about Orm being focused on war with the surface and that kind of thing, mm-hmm. um, which is obviously tease up mm-hmm. basically motivation and, um, and uh, Aquaman. That, that's crazy too. <laughs> like we talk about how like, it, how wild it would have been to see because there were like cool moments in the theatrical version that Zach had shot. <laughs> um, it would have been so cool to see th- all of those moments for the first time watching this yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, I've seen a lot and, of people say, sorry, go ahead, Ryan. No, I, I was just going to say like, that's, that was one of them. The, just the mere mention of King Orm. Like I would have lost my mind if I had heard that in this movie, like before the Aquaman movie had come out. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. <clears throat> it's also going to help the character that they have in this movie too. Like you see a little bit more anger and brooding in the whole exchange mm-hmm. that they took out before because it didn't make sense with the character they came up with. Like he was a yeah. bro, <laughs> like right. second comic relief mm-hmm. or a third. I don't know how many they tried forcing into the last one, but <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, this is a very different character. And I think I've told you guys that I'm most impressed with how different this character is. Because it wasn't like he didn't get a lot of screen time before. Mm -hmm. But they just formed him into something very different than what we have here. This is a way more complex, better, more accurate character um, in my eyes. And I think this exchange, you know, kind of, like, helps lay into that. Yeah. Like, the I I was thinking about this the other day, too. Like, do you remember the the sequence in the Batcave where Joss Whedon just had him, like, steal something out of the Batcave? Like, in the hangar that they've tried to make. Or, yeah, whatever. Sorry, the hangar. (laughs) They they say it's the Batcave because Barry's like, it's like a Batcave or whatever. But it's not. It's the hangar. Like, whatever. But, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. He, like, he, like, low-key, like grab something off the table or something and like walks. I'm like, what do you do? Like, why? Yeah, it's, it's such a <laughs> dumb, like it, it lessens his character because he's stealing something and yeah. it's, they play it for a joke. It's like, Oh, hey, it's and not it, funny. No and it diminishes. At all. Yeah. No payoff. Like, <laughs> just... But now I was going to say, um, I, to me, a lot of people think that this sequence with, Volko and Arthur, as well as like the mother box sequence um, with Mira and such um, is Atlantis. And they say it's like, this is Snyder's Atlantis versus like uh, James Wan's like avatar Pandora looking Atlantis. But I always just assumed that this was on the outskirts. Like this was that's I, that's what like I a too. fortress, like a, you know, um, that it wasn't intended to be Atlantis. It wasn't like, um, oh, it just looks and, like ruins. Yeah, to me. Somebody yeah. I was listening to a podcast this week, and somebody was like, "You know, even with like the tri, they under they changed so much from Snyder's version of these characters, like um, in Atlantis. You know, it looks different, whatever. And Arthur's got a different trident, and I'm like, and he's like, the trident was right there, and and um, <laughs> Zack Snyder's Justice League. I'm like, no, that what that was a statue. That wasn't a trident. That wasn't like right. that was a statue. Right. And yeah. that he he swims up to of yeah King Atlan, but it wasn't <laughs> yeah. this. It like yes, it that looks like what he how he ends up getting it in the, the Aquaman movie, but but yeah. that was the actual. That was like a statue right. of that place, right? Uh, but <laughs> I just like how did uh, I don't know? Did you not get the mother connection? Like he says, take up your mother's trident. Like this is yeah. your. It's, <laughs> That's the point. Right. Zach wanted him to have his mother's trident first because he wanted to let the director of the next movie handle all that. He didn't want to steal that away from him. Right. Um, just like he didn't want to give him his actual Aquaman suit. That was um, that was one of the cool shots too. Um, I, I love the, the little yeah, like in the with the water from the bubble mm-hmm. kind of just rushing over top of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just it's another freaking beautiful Zack Snyder shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, yeah so that after that 
we yeah we jump back to the reactor um and Stefan calls up the sub um the sod for the first time the sod the sod <laughs> i mom, call mom mom <laughs> um yeah so you actually wrote that down <laughs> i didn't even see that over there <laughs> yeah dude, I, I, the well that's that's one of those um Again, the, this the dialogue in the sequence super stood out to me. Um, I love Steppenwolf's quote where he says, "The free world must be ripped from them, given absolution and one glorious belief to serve him." Like it just makes mm -hmm. what's what they're trying to do sound so like fanatic and like yeah. epic. <laughs> um, and act well beyond that, just actually explaining any kind of rational motivation for what they're doing beyond yeah, just, yes. you know, destroying the world. Um, and then of course we get, we get this or Desaad's appearance in the monolith. Um, <clears throat> and there were, there, there's just, yeah, there's there's your shot, a, Chris. I love it. Referencing. Love that scene. You betrayed him. You betrayed him. <laughs> it's just so this cool. The pace of it, how it comes up and just cuts right in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you yeah. you talked about uh, the vocal like yeah. effect. Mm -hmm. It's so like I think Ryan mentions like electricity or something like flowing through his teeth yeah. or something like it's yeah. like it's, it's like a, a it's a really almost. it's like, a real tangible like you know effect. Yeah. Um, but they, they, I love the kind of relationship that they set up in this whole um, conversation between them um, where. The sod's like, yes, mighty Steppenwolf, who might have sat here at the side of the great one. <laughs> and you just know, like, that comment just like yeah. to the core. <laughs> yeah, yo, you eyes. see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Puppy dog guys. <laughs> Takes a big um, gulp. Yeah, I think Chris, you <laughs> described it as like Steppenwolf puss in boots. Oh yeah. <laughs> kinda, yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of eyes. Yeah. Um yeah, he said he tells Steppenwolf, "You still owe the Great One fifty thousand more worlds." Like, he like all this dude <laughs> wants to do is yeah, all this dude wants to do is be accepted by Darkseid, and this guy just comes in and he's just like, "Stop talking, just do your job." Basically, like <laughs> we'll talk about it when you paid your debt. I would love um, to know what happened between the two of them. Could be it could like have been the, explored. What at the some betrayal point was in the future. Who knows? Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> One can um, hope. Yeah. So uh, we, I guess we have kind of talked about it, but do you guys have anything else you want to point out about this scene? The, how it's sh the VFX or how it's shot, dialogue, anything? I just, I think just love seeing the weakness in uh, Steppenwolf from all angles. Like, not only him, like, <laughs> emotional and insecure and defeated, but like, he's like afraid and cowering and like, yeah, leading up to someone after we saw him just like wipe out the amazonians yeah. and everything so yeah pretty cool to see like the power level right yeah they, that's something <clears throat> that they that is hammered home in this movie is like the hierarchy within mm -hmm. this group <laughs> um and you know to the end like at the end where um steppenwolf smashes or sorry dark side smashes steppenwolf's head under his boot like mm -hmm. it's been a four-hour movie <laughs> trying to stop this guy like good luck with me <laughs> kind of deal um yeah is yeah, it in so, this sequence that afterwards he like kind of grabs the one parademon and like throws it and they all mm -hmm. are like sent off that, that was that, that was, was the previous that, that's when he gets there yeah okay yeah so that scene um, when we saw it initially it kept sticking my head of like i feel like in this version it made sense that he like grabs the mm -hmm. one he's just angry he throws it and they all go i was like i feel like i remember in the theatrical there's something weird like he grabbed somebody and like it didn't have a reason and it was really distracting so i went back and i fast forward through this theatrical and as he's sending them all out he just like picks one and he grabs him and just like holds him there choking him <laughs> and like that's it he's just like he does he never lets go he just chokes one to death for no reason and i just like whatever reason that stood out to me that i was like that was weird yeah <laughs> All right. I don't remember that at all. It's hilarious. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that was probably them just being like, we got to make him 
because they don't have him being imposing anywhere else. So they're like, this will do it. It was just a seven kills, seven. kill parody seven. for no reason. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we, from there, we jump to the aerospace hangar, Wayne aerospace hangar. Um, and Diana shows up and <laughs> the little exchange there where he's like, I paid no, thousands of dollars for this building security. And she's just like, yeah, you got your money's worth. I took care. It took me two minutes to take care of it. <laughs> Yeah. Hi there. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, but then we get the jumping into the history lesson, um, mm -hmm. which is kind of like literally. A, yes, nice one. Um, mm. This is kind Some of more center framing for be, you. There you go. It seems to be a uh, kind of a fan favorite um, sequence in this movie mm -hmm. uh, that was butchered to no end in the theatrical. <laughs> um, but yeah, so before we kind of talk about, you know, all the people featured in this and whatnot, I just wanted to kind of get y'all's general thoughts on um, the sequence. And Brandon, what you got? I obviously, I love Lord of the Rings. So this is like just a page right out of that. Yes. I mean, it just it's awesome especially like even even already seeing the very like abbreviated version that includes steppenwolf instead of dark side or yuxus mm -hmm. um in the theatrical like just how much additional just context this gives uh and and at the same time you know following following the in this one you already have like the drawings in the temple is talking about this battle. Uh, so you got that and you're wondering what is that? I mean, we knew going into it, what it was, but um, as far as the story is concerned, and you've got, um, you've got Steppenwolf talking to the sod falling out of favor with this character that you're also, you know, you're not supposed to know at this point who that is. And so then just laying the groundwork and showing this, this guy who's conquering these worlds who, you know, it takes basically everything that Earth has uh, at its mm -hmm. disposal to to kind of fight back against this guy. And he's also like this version of him versus the version that we see later where he's just like, he's like super cocky in this version. He's mm -hmm. like, he doesn't wear any armor. You know, he's just like going in, just like wrecking havoc and then gets a little too cocky yeah. and gets taken out uh, versus the version that we see. I love the him as Dark Side. The, the I think it was the Hollywood Reporter did a uh, piece on with the VFX crew for I think it was Hollywood mm -hmm. Reporter um, for the VFX crew who worked on the dark side stuff and they essentially said they had to design two dark sides like they had to design design like this like imposing warrior cocky dark side and then they had to design like the regal like sinister menacing dark side um that you mm -hmm. see at the end on apocalypse which i thought was interesting um they basically kind of created two visual identities <laughs> yeah um, and i see i don't know as much about fourth world stuff as maybe you guys do but like i don't know what it like what happens between uxus and dark side in terms of like why his eyes are red at that point and mm -hmm. Uh, the Omega Beam stuff, like I don't, I personally don't know that history. So I'm wondering if, if the Omega Beam thing for Dark Side, I think I'm wondering if Zach is going to work that into being some part of the anti life, like benefit of the anti life. I could be wrong, don't know, but that's just something I was mm -hmm. thinking about as I was watching the. Yeah, I was just wondering because yeah, but he and, does have the red eyes right when he's in mm -hmm. Apocalypse. So I'm just curious. Uh, he leveled up somehow <laughs> along the way. Yeah, that's true. I guess I'm thinking more of like the flaming, like the, you know, like in the anime that he does it in this yeah, movie, yeah. like the animated show. Yeah. Where he, the, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know it, that that stuff would be, it would be interesting to see if they could explain more of that kind of stuff in future installments. Wouldn't yeah. it guy? <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> it would. Uh, but yeah, I mean, um, before I let Chris talk, before I let you talk, Chris. Yeah, let me. Um, <laughs> man, I just love, like, we talked about this yeah. on the live show, just like the Amazonians, like with their like more like um, 
clan, uh, you know, yeah. tribal uh, attire, um, as well as like all the god elements with Zeus and Ares and mm. Artemis, uh, the Green Lantern. Um, it's just, uh, it's just, it's super cool, man. <laughs> like <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't get cooler. Yeah. Uh, it's like all my favorite things, uh, in yeah. one little sequence here, Atlanteans. I didn't even say them. Uh, yeah. and then all the tribes of men too. It's like every tribe of men, you know? Um, yep. and so it's just, uh, it's awesome. It shows it, put, it sets the table for what the justice league essentially is going to be up against. Mm-hmm. Um, if it took all these, to the end, the or, green, you know, yeah. yeah, to, to fight back then what's that look like now that he's, you know, not just Steppenwolf, but, you know, in the future when Darkseid comes, like, you know, we need more than just, you know, we definitely yeah. need more than Batman. We definitely need more than Wonder Woman and Superman. Mm-hmm. We're going to need, you know, lanterns and, you know. Unite the league. Whatever, but exactly. Um, so, Chris. Chris. Yeah, I mean, same vein as you, the – the Lord of the Rings aspect of this was super cool to see. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I love how brutal it is too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, blood there's just a whole lot of energy to it. Like all the horseback riding scenes and just like the, mm-hmm. the impact that I, you see on everything. And I think I talked about you with the horseback riding, like Hippolyta where she like really like, you know, she like yells like Amazons, but then she like really like leans oh, yeah, into you, like I when she's like she's riding really on like, it. She's not just like yeah. green screen. Like I'm on a right. Okay, I'm <laughs> yeah. on a I, I that I disagree. I feel like that's easily really green huh. screen when she's like doing this. Like I oh, feel I like took that. the opposite, dude. She was like dialed in. Like her head does not move. Like she's like I, key, like I would put money on it that it was. Her well, I'm sure she's rocking. not actually yeah. like. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm it just saying. It looked like, to me. It, it, it. You don't think she was doesn't. actually in battle? Brandon, just so you know, there's there were no apocalyptans actually here that they were yeah. fighting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I don't believe you, Brandon. So, but yeah, um, cool shots. Brandon's wrong. Lantern <laughs> thing was sweet. <laughs> seeing uh we got to see more lanterns. Not just like something in the background. Like we saw. I looked it up. Of a battle and uh, Yalan Gert. It was actually like he's a little, like I had known. I know nothing about him, but he's just an ancient lantern. Mm-hmm. Um, did you look like it? I had seen something about it, and I guess he was like a more obscure lantern. Like people were surprised uh-huh. that that was the one that they chose. Yeah. Um, well, it was cool the there. only one that they chose. They were there were more lanterns in this movie. I know. Attended. There were. There were. Mm-hmm. Um, and sure. and and dead yeah mm-hmm. um we we've talked i think we talked about it in the um the other uh stream we were on to though the uh the shot where dark side chops the hand off the lantern yeah. and reaches for the ring and like it like the glow on him like he, he almost like smirks like yes yeah. and then the ring just like flies off mm-hmm. it's just crazy to get that in a movie <laughs> yeah i mean seeing that live action is pretty awesome um, one thing i wish that they would have done different not differently but had a little more variation was zeus's like lightning strikes yeah. he's yeah. had the same yeah. moves. <laughs> 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 like i mean he does it like three times all right let's do it a little different yeah. one time maybe I don't it know. was cool to do see like more that. zeus but i didn't love what we got with the uh the visuals there yeah. over and over yeah. but, uh, it was Gosh, awesome. Chris. I wish the men would have done like a better job burying their box. Like everybody else had this like elaborate thing. They're like, you got the whole thing. Yeah, here's the whole. All right. Like we put the dirt back over, right? Yeah, we'll do that at least. And like, cool, let's go. <laughs> I, saw, okay. like, I saw a meme somewhere of um, it was like the I, I think it was uh the Atlanteans like hiding their box, and it was like a, a picture of the octopus or whatever and all that. And then it was men hiding their box, and it was a it was a door with a latch on it, and they <laughs> tucked a Cheeto in the latch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for like yeah. Smeagol to like come up from the background or something like that. Yeah, 
Yeah, but it was awesome. Very... Like, you know, that lore, it just makes you want to see like, man, can we get like more old God, you know, movies or see yeah. more of like these tribal Amazonians? It's just, you know, again, just painting such a big picture that just implies all this history and right everything else you want to see. It's good to it's see. Also, I loved Ares just drive his axe straight into the shoulder of. I just wish know, they made Ares look cooler. <laughs> the uh, I, I will say I I loved the treatment that Zach gave the god, like visual treatment that Zach, Zach gave the gods. They were like in like inhumanly like built, but mm-hmm. not like like you know some crazy deity figure. But then they had that like light in their arms and yeah. like it was just a cool like not over the top <laughs> and then you got to see like how big um, they were compared to everybody else that was yeah. kind of cool too right <clears throat> um yeah. but yeah so they put uh david thulis's face over um the aries actor mckinless yeah i uh i was looking at their imdb thing the other day and he and actually watching the movie the last time and David Thewlis is actually like credited on screen in the um he was credited in theatrical beginning. Was he really? Yeah. That's that's interesting. <laughs> I don't even know if you see him. <laughs> right. <laughs> um Brandon, I, we got to see uh briefly got to see Antiope, which we I did a fan of hers. Yeah. I lo- yeah, I wish the they, they, she would have had some sort of action set piece, but maybe they only had yeah. her for just some like small shots. Mm-hmm. as far as time but um yeah yeah love some robin um, right i i also um i dug the kind of description of the anti like when he slams the um his pike or whatever it was axe ish thing down on the ground and you see the the anti-life equation symbol like lava like flood all around him um I thought that was awesome. That was cool visual. I thought it was cool how they echoed it with Steppenwolf, um, mm-hmm. to kind of that that whole sequence really to kind of show that the equation was there, um, and explain. Uh, Wonder Woman explains some other boxes. Um, basically, like says it's like so techy that it's almost witchcrafty, which is cool. That in the end with Cyborg when he's trying to rip the boxes apart, it's almost like these like demonic yeah women or what like ghosts that, that are popping out of them um one thing i did want to talk to you guys about which which i think zach addressed kind of briefly was why did dark side not remember that the anti-life equation was on earth um and i think the i, I think the reason that zach gave was it had been thousands of years he almost died and like everybody at that point everybody that he had like that had been a part of that armada and everything had passed away um but i didn't know if you yeah. guys like picked up on anything in the story that like would have indicated i think um i also wondered that but i kind of reasoned it away it's kind of like you were saying that if they're conquering thousands and thousands of worlds and this one is the one where he gets kind of knocked unconscious, um, Mm -hmm. it could, it could be just like some sort of amnesia type thing. He can't can't remember. Yeah. Yeah, Can't remember where it was. I guess Um, that was a lot of blood. (laughs) I still don't like that plot point. Yeah. No, I mean, it's one of those things that you kind of have to, you have to make your own head cannon to kind of, you know, justify it. So um, nobody wrote it down. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, did um, they did they directly say that he found anti life there? Because the, yeah. Steppenwolf does, but did they say it in that moment that that's where mm-hmm. anti life was? Yeah, and then I Steppenwolf he, he even like mentions it. Well, I don't know if I don't know if she says anti life, but he she says that he found the ultimate weapon, um, hidden here on Earth or buried here on Earth or something like that. Hmm. Um, which it can't be the mother box. Well, it just seems like it could be. It, I wonder if it's like their like system of 
finding planets is not like an exact science. They're just like going through the multiverse and they stumble upon, they don't have like, it's not like they have Google maps and like could go to like recently yeah. visited places. You know? <laughs> I mean, if they um, have yeah, technology that's, that's basically witchcraft, you'd think they would have Google maps, but <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Yeah. You so, both raise great points. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm over. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we also get, we should mention too, we get a um, Ray Porter dark cameo. Yeah. Yep. Here, uh, here in the sequence. And when we had him on the show, he actually mentioned that he filmed this before he got the dark side role. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It was cool. I, I, I figured it was like a supplemental, like, Hey, you're doing Same. dark side. Why don't you just come in here and do this small cameo? Get your face in here. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Um, the first but scene where he like jumps down and he grabs the earth and he goes to swing down and uh, reveal anti life. Anti life. Mm -hmm. uh, I was watching it with Kelly when I was going through part two again, and she had watched the Ray Porter interview. Mm -hmm. And when he kind of does that yellow grunt thing, she's like, "That is Ray Porter, though. Like he makes those noises." <laughs> <laughs> just, like, so impressed by it. That's awesome. He makes those noises. <laughs> yeah. Awesome dude does that. It's a it's a freakishly amazing portrayal of dark like this villain like puts his voice puts thanos to shame <laughs> as far as like intimidation and just oh just, I, I i'm kind of with kelly his voice makes those noises <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so good. Um, yeah it's, it's a cool little cameo but yeah but i, I agree guess, with uh, you chris the men they come on guys those those darn men. At least dig a little deeper, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, they dug deeper than Cyborg did, but it's that's true. true. <laughs> oh gosh, there's also a lot of guys that they could have dug deeper. That's okay. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. We'll move past it. It all worked out, did it? <laughs> mm. Mm. Um, cool. So yeah, that that kind of wraps up um, part two of Zack Snyder's Justice League. Um, well, we end on my boy. <laughs> like, he said the age Good of heroes never come. What was he wearing? And, uh, in that yeah. part? He's wearing this. Nice. Not a suit that you like so much when he tucks it in, but you think you think no. Brandon like good. watches the Bruce Wayne scenes and then he like Googles to like find the exact same. I have, a, I have a Bruce Wayne cut. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. in a personal stash. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've heard enough. Um, <laughs> okay, it is it is late, Brandon. We'll let you get to that or whatever. Um, yeah, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, guys. So thanks thanks for joining us. Um, we'll, we'll we will be back for part three. Um, we'll have that up. We're four, releasing five, six, this weekly. Seven. Yeah, four, five, six epilogue. Chris epilogue. Okay. Okay. Um, we're releasing these weekly and uh, I recommend that if you love talking about this stuff, if you enjoyed the episode, definitely hit the subscribe button, um, hit the notification bell. So you are up to date whenever we release videos like this, whenever we go live with Chris's beautiful face on the show. Um, and definitely give us a follow at Cape cash show on Twitter. We're on there all the time. Always talking about all things geek. So, uh gents it's been fun enjoyed it see Chris, you next time do you enjoy it i'm Zombie really tired Chris? i'm sorry yeah i can see <laughs> <laughs> bye chris Just let Come me sleep. go now <laughs>